why don't we start off with um, how are you doing, Dan? Thanks for asking. Uh, I, it's a it's a loaded question on how I'm doing because uh, it's a two part answer because it's good and bad. Of course, it's both it's both and, and yet it's a beautiful answer because I feel like I'm living my life um, just so in the moment. I appreciate the smallest things. I notice the smallest things that I would have never noticed if I had not been blessed with this extra time in my life and uh, the space that I have been given by the church you know, to, to resign. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm bummed that I've had to do things like give up my job that I loved as a pastor. I'm selling my convertible, you know, these kinds of things that, that super bum me out. They make me sad. And yet I just also feel so blessed because this is testimony Sunday. And I, and honestly, I can share testimonies and maybe you can invite me back next month <laughs> just to talk about the little things um, that I now notice that I would have never noticed in a million years. So I would say my update is that I am just really enjoying my life on so many levels. Great. Thank you for uh, letting us know how things are going. Yeah. Uh, so as you know, today we're talking about um, our amazing visit to our friend Izzy let's shall we just talk about what happened because we both you and I have had this experience life-changing experience and every time I've told somebody and I know you're doing the same you tell people and they can't believe it but really every time I say it I can't believe it yeah so it was just an incredible event but there were so many things that happened that added to the testimony of that that trip and so why don't we start at the very beginning when we when we arrived with all our paperwork in order I'll tell, I'll tell them a bit about yes. the the guard so we turn up at the prison and there's actually a queue outside which sometimes there's a little queue maybe one or two but this was a, probably more like four and there's only one guy in the booth and there's normally four to five mm -hmm. and and um, when we got there the guy lets us in and um we're like, oh, we're just going to walk straight in because we've got our paperwork. And he says, no, Dan's not cleared. But now he's got a queue at the desk. He's got people interrupting and on the phone. But he stayed so patient, so kind all the way through. He did not dismiss us or anybody. His name was Scott the whole time we were there. And that in itself was an absolute miracle because you and I know, Dan, you turn up and you're one minute past the 45 minutes beforehand and you can't go in. Yeah. Usually they're all super busy. Um, they're all kind of mean because they're guards of a jail. So you just have this impression and the impression usually shows up to be, proves to be true. And here is one guy running the entire show. He, like a lot of people call him sick and he is just giving us his time and as you mentioned that line just got longer and longer as he's trying to work with us to get us to go visit Izzy on the eighth floor so go ahead and so he looks at our paperwork no we can't uh we can't go because Dan's paperwork doesn't seem to have cleared and trying to of course you don't have your phone so you can't give him any emails and so then we, we drop on the fact oh do you know Chaplain Tom yes he knows him he's going to get hold of him for us. So he spends quite a long time ringing each floor to get Chaplain Tom to come down. We were sitting there now for a long time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't have, honestly, based on the, the disease progression, <laughs> I, I don't have the energy and the endurance to sit in a chair mm -hmm. or honestly to do anything for 90 minutes. So I was starting to get a little like kind of on edge. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about that 90 minutes too, because some good things happened there too. But mm -hmm. I just physically, I was just, I, I was kind of looking at my watch mm -hmm. and thinking, Heather, like mm -hmm. we might have to mm -hmm. reschedule this simply because I'm starting to feel my back cramp up. Mm -hmm. um, 
And yet within that time, you and I had a great time just catching up because I don't see you anymore. So just the drive there and then the hour and a half together hanging out with you was a complete blessing. Mm -hmm. You asked me, if you don't mind me sharing this quick story, you asked me how my book was going and Mm -hmm. I said, great. And I talked about how this book that I just wrote actually wasn't a plan of mine. And I told you about um, this, this book that I've had in my mind for 11 years about writing, writing about testimonies of superstar athletes that love the Lord, football players, baseball players, hockey players, kind of thing. And writing a book of testimonies that, that I could share their testimony through a book, hoping that as someone reads about you know, their fame, their, their favorite football player loving Jesus, maybe they themselves will be inspired by that testimony. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that was the amazing hour and a half. You and I got to catch up and, and, and then finally you stand up and you're like, let me go check again. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then all of a sudden this chaplain Tom shows up. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you take it from there. Well, and also one of the reasons we were doing this special visit is because Pastor Dan and I have been clear to not have to wait the 45 minutes beforehand. Right. And so the idea was we would be able to turn up, visit Izzy, and be done in an hour, the whole thing. Um, eventually they find this Chaplain Tom and he comes down and it's a different Chaplain Tom. Who knew? Which is like, who knew? Two Chaplain Toms at Santa Clara County Jail. Yeah. One is a volunteer and one works there. So... Um, he has a whole conversation with us, which was really actually a gift as well. But we can't get hold of Chaplain Tom because we don't have a phone. And I asked them to call him, but they can't. And so we were like, OK, I'll go back to the car. I'll get my phone and talk to Chaplain Tom. As we're saying this, the, the, the one that we know, the Chaplain Tom we know, just happens to walk in. And even the other Chaplain Tom was like, this is, this is exactly what I'm talking about, how God moves. And so then Dan and I went back and sat down for a bit longer and Chaplain Tom gave us this, said, yep, yeah, and it was starting to work out. Anyway, so Dan and I get to go and we, we are trying to act like we know what we're doing. And we actually, I think we're both at the same time. And I, I told Mark this, I said, I'm looking forward to taking Mark in, but I'm so grateful I did it with Dan first because Dan and I are pretty similar. We're a little naughty, I'm going to say. And if we could get away with a little thing, then we, we're gonna going to do it as much as we can. And we had our mask on and we, I said, I said, let's just walk like we we know what we're doing. And we obviously didn't because every door we pulled up pushed the wrong way. We, we figured out how to get to the elevator uh, through the mousetrap maze of the jail system. And they, there's specific signals that you have to do in order to get the eighth floor. So we did our eighth floor signal. Because there's did, no buttons. No buttons, right? Because it's all high security. So we get to the eighth floor and I step off and you, you can share your side of the story, but we step off the eighth floor and we walk through these double doors and another set of double doors. And I look to my right and I see all of these um, people in jail, the jail guys, whatever you call them, inmates in their orange suits, <laughs> freely walking around <laughs> in the section that we just got access to. And I'm thinking to myself, hold on a second. Are they going to let us in? the eighth floor with basically free range, if you will, for lack of a better word, inmates. And sure enough, that was the case. So I'm kind of like a Heather, like Mm. give me a favor and stay close. We walk through these, these another set of double doors and all these inmates are just walking around. It's their free time. Mm. And we walk up to this other guard now, and it's just this one guard and us, and I don't know, 20 to 30 inmates walking around freely. And I'm thinking to myself the whole time, there is no way we should have this type of access. <laughs> like something went wrong. And yet this is, this is borderline exciting and nerve wracking because we have no idea what's about to happen. And I'm like, you know, I'm checking my six, like, I'm like, I'm looking over my shoulder and I'm like, I know Izzy, but I don't know any of these other dudes. And here's Izzy like on the top floor and he sees us and he's like this excited grandkid. 
that just is walking, watching his grandparents walk through the door that he hasn't seen in a couple years. And this mm -hmm. dude is bouncing off the wall with mm -hmm. excitement. He comes running down the stairs and he like starts introducing us to everybody on the yeah. floor. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is Pastor Heather. Hey, Heather, I need you to meet boo, 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 boo. And this is Pastor Dan. And Heather's the one that gives us our devotionals. And all of a sudden, all these dudes start coming around. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope all these dudes are Christian because like, I, like I don't want to be, me. and I'm signing all these documents that like, you know, it's, I'm like, we, you know, you have to sign your life away. You literally have to sign your life away. Like the responsibility is no longer yours. If you get knifed or raped or whatever, like, so <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, we're, we're in, we're like in jail with all of our, with all of our friends. And Izzy is the mayor and he's introducing us to everybody. So true. And he's also the pastor. Yeah. So that was the other beautiful thing that struck yeah. me right away. So then there's this one dude that he's like, come over here. So now he wants us to walk across the floor. And I'm like, kind of standing next to the guard. Like, I don't know if I want to leave this dude's side. And as he's like, come here, come here, come here. I'm like, oh God, are we even allowed? And you and I look at each other like, are, it, like I just knew that you were thinking the same thing I am. Like, are we even allowed to step across like the floor? So we go across, he introduces this guy like in this, like he's in this dark jail cell. We look through the window and this dude pops his face up. He's like, this is Dan and Heather. And he's like, hey, like through his jail cell. The whole thing was just so surreal, right? Yeah. And then finally the guard goes, hey, get back here. Like yeah. stay behind this red line box. I don't know if you remember this, but we walked past them and they were doing their pull-ups. They had no top yeah. on and they were, there was guys clipping their nails, shaving, yeah. yeah. push-ups like ripped yeah. guys just and you're like oh yeah and as Dan said there was this adrenaline of a bit of fear but so much excitement and then when we went down that dark corridor and we went down and, and the guard really didn't take a lot of notice of at all we went down this dark corridor and even when we got to the door you can't see anything but then there's this face right smack in yeah. front of you like that hello thank you for the devotionals and you're like yeah. okay but Dan and I are kind of like uh, what do we do? And so I think because I knew we'd waited so long, I was like, why don't we sit here? So we went, we went sit down and that's when the guard was like, he, and what he said was, hey guys, first of all, he said, what are you doing here? And we both went, uh, busy, busy. Because <laughs> <'Cause> obviously <laughs> if you go in as a pastor, you go with your purpose, you're going to do a Bible study. Or, yeah. But then, and then he said, look guys, I can't protect you mm -hmm. out here. Could you, would you mind sitting in this chair? Yeah. But uh, where I can see you, and both yeah. and I went oh, great. And like Dan said, the scene is he 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 kind of went, oh, came out, and then he was, ran back and started shouting to people. Yeah. And and as he also says about the mayor thing, it, people would come and they're like, "Hey, is he? Can I can I speak to them?" And he'd be like, "Yeah, go for it, brother. Go for it, brother." And then they 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 would say something. Yeah. And and exactly what Dan described the grandchild. I looked and saw a little boy performing, and yeah. it it was it was touching. It was so touching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Start now. Yeah, no, I'm going to. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So Izzy comes down and he's like, I just finished this song and I want to perform it for you. So and it, it, meanwhile, he's invited five of his friends over. So there's five dudes. We're all sitting down in this semicircle with our backs up against the wall next to the guard. Izzy stands up and starts rapping this rap that was just such a beautiful testimony about his love of christ and his experience and and now we're sitting down with a bunch of guys that i gotta tell you were probably the freest christian men i have ever met mm -hmm. in my entire life mm -hmm. and they're behind bars yeah and, and that was just just mind-boggling to me on how much light and freedom and the presence of the Holy Spirit on the eighth floor of the Santa Clara County jail. It was stepping into revival. Yeah. And then Izzy starts not only introducing us to all the brothers in there that had recently accepted Christ, he starts giving us the numbers. Yeah. He's like, there are 48 jail cells on two floors with the, on the eighth floor. Of the 48, 35 of the 48 have accepted Christ 
yeah. on Izzy's watch. There was a guy that was still in his cell, cell because they, they did it by floor. So the second floor, they were all walking around free. M meanwhile, the first floor were, were not allowed to come out of their cells. And Izzy then turns to the mm. guard next to us and says, hey, will you let out Matthew? Mm. And the guard's like, uh, all right. So he goes mm. over and lets this dude on the first mm. floor, Matthew, out. So now we're, he introduces to Matthew and he goes, Matthew's got this most amazing voice. Mm. But wait a minute, Dan, yeah. tell them about all the names. <laughs> it was, this is funny. Yeah, it, it, every single dude Izzy introduced us to was a biblical name. Yeah. It was. Um, but uh, how he was saying, he'd be like this, Elijah. Yeah. Elijah. Gabriel. Gabriel. <laughs> Ezekiel. Matthew. I mean, it was Isaiah. Yeah. Matt, it was just yeah. so fun. Yeah. It was yeah, go great. on, carry on. So yeah, speak. It was, it was yeah. great. But then, the, and then the guard says, okay, now the rec room's open. You can go in there, which I think Dan and I were like, oh, that's okay. That's good. Now we're in this room. So five guys. Kind of. At the same time, like. Yeah. But now I, we had no guard in there. No, no. I think the guard let his guard down because I think yeah. he saw what was happening. Mm. I mean, I think the guard was experiencing the same revival we were experiencing mm. in the moment. Mm. So the guard opens up this rec room mm. fellowship hall, if you will. Yeah to us and now so he opens up the door these i think it's five or six other guys five. And, then you and i five other guys and then you and i we walk in this door and he shuts the door behind us so we're now in the fellowship hall <laughs> of this jail cell with five prisoners mm. and they all just start sharing their testimony mm. the one of them says to me he's like hey dan we want to write a book mm. Could you help us do that? And I'm like, what's your book about? And Heather, I can see her smiling yeah. right here next to me. And I go, what's your book about? He's like, well, what we want to do is we want to share our testimonies. Mm -hmm. And we want you, like, it would be great if you can help us compile the testimonies and then publish a book. I'm like, that's funny. Because mm -hmm. Heather and I were just talking about it. But in that moment, God again humbles me. Mm -hmm. Because... This is this is this is how Jesus rolls. This is this is who Jesus is. He doesn't go after the righteous and the saved. He goes after the lost. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can write a book about NFL Hall of Famers and you know Grammy award-winning actors that have accepted Christ and God bless them for doing that. But God, God says, Hey Dan, how about a bunch of brothers in the lord mm. that are more free than anyone that you have ever met and i'm like hallelujah i'll mm. stick around for that mm. so then matthew says hey do you care if i sing a song for you missing teeth matthew missing teeth. matthew matthew who is probably three widths of at least me if not more the chest on him was huge t-shirt missing teeth says can i sing for you catted up all of them like every yeah. one of these dudes i was afraid of like they all were you know ex-gang members mm -hmm. uh all of them I'm not sure what they're in there for but probably violent violent crimes mm -hmm. and matthew says can i sing a song mm -hmm. and he goes up against the bookshelf mm -hmm. and goes <laughs> angelically starts singing a song mm. that just is all about freedom mm. in Christ <clears throat> and just blows away it was the most powerful worship song that I have ever experienced so here Heather and I with our newfound chaplain status or sitting in the room being completely humbled mm -hmm. by these five brothers in the Lord and blown away mm -hmm. by the church experience. So here we are, this tiny little church in Palo Alto, 
with Heather's help contributing to devotionals and interactions with these inmates and the gospel is spreading like a wildfire mm -hmm. through the eighth floor mm -hmm. and we are now experiencing it live. God gave us a snapshot that we mm -hmm. should not have had access to mm -hmm. and God is showing us mm -hmm. the work that he is doing in there mm -hmm. through these men who have who are completely sold out for Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as their Lord and Savior. And Heather and I were eyewitnesses of this mountaintop encounter mm -hmm. where we saw the face of God mm -hmm. in person. And now we are coming off the mountain sharing it with you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, well, also, it, while we were there, so this guy not only, I mean, because he does get told off for press hitting the wall, but he does... And it, and, the humbleness of all of them. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. He starts to. Yeah. yeah. And that that was incredible. That the feeling in that room. And then each guy, and not all of them, I think three of them all sang a verse because it was what they're going to perform on their on their church service. Yeah. And the, each verse was a personal to them. Yeah. So Dan and I are sitting there, and one guy says that the worst time in his life is holding his daughter as she dies in his arms. Yeah. I mean, it was raw and yeah. they and then and then but in that little core uh, verse that he has the second half is how jesus saved him how yeah. jesus brought hope yeah. back one guy talked about how they felt suicidal and things yeah. uh, and then how jesus is changing that uh, but in the middle of all this as well this huge guy huge guy comes yeah. in opens the door and he has a picture of dan yeah when dan resigned i sent pictures to the jail just to give for prayer and he brings this picture of dan and he goes that this is you pastor dan and dan's like yeah like i don't know the big prisoner into this room and he goes this huge guy says every morning and every night i am on my knees praying for you brother and it just was like it was just it was incredible and as they, yeah, there's the singing and just their humbleness. And then, yeah. but while the whole time I was there, I was looking at these guys going, <sighs> one, I was like, this is what Jesus' disciples would look like. Yeah, but right. I just knew that Jesus was here yeah. with these guys more than, like Dan says, more than people that I know, probably more than me. Like, not that I'm anything, but like, just seeing, just seeing, wow, Jesus is right here. And Jesus has chosen these people to hang with, really hang with. Yeah. And when Dan shared about his, like, something about him, they were all broken. And then when we kind of were coming towards the end, that big Matthew said, I'd like to sing this hymn, didn't yeah. he? And he just, yeah. yeah, it was amazing. Closed the service in worship. He did. <laughs> it was uh, it did. Yeah, I think the only thing we missed was communion that day. <laughs> yeah, and then we all prayed. Yeah, we held hands. We're in this room. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. The, the the greatest thing about it is that the guard comes in and he's like looking at his watch. He's yeah. like, because we've been there a long time. You've been in here for like two hours. But yeah, so the guard comes in and he's like, um, and then I said, "Can we pray?" I didn't. I just didn't think I would. He would let us, but I because. The guard has now come in. It's time yeah. to go. And he was like, yeah, of course you can. And he didn't rush us at all, did he? No. no he just exactly. said, yeah, of course. I thought he and was going to jump yeah. in the circle with us, actually. Yeah. The guard. So, yeah, you can't walk in that floor without being completely transformed by Christ. And I think they know that. These brothers know that. And they, they have their eyes on everybody else that have yet to say yes to Jesus. So, but I just want to encourage everybody, too, just to know that, you know, God is moving powerfully through the influence of Palo Alto First Christian Church, you know, you, you wonder where your tithes and offerings and your, you know, your commitment to this church. And even though we're a small church, God is the grower and he is the one scattering and watering and flourishing the kingdom um, by using this church. And so like, I, again, I walked out of there just with such a humble heart with absolute gratefulness for, for Heather, for Izzy for this church for everything that God is doing. So, uh, yeah, give yourself a round of applause because mm -hmm. if, if it wasn't for FCC, we wouldn't have been able to sit and witness what we had witnessed. Mm -hmm.